Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is the Shankly Sessions, the Liverpool podcast we bring you each and every week on the upper tier out there on YouTube. Do me a favor, head out there and smash that subscribe and bell notification button. This is your Liverpool versus Man United preview coming to you from Anfield, 8 p.m. Tuesday. Another massive game, some would say another cup final. 11 games to go in terms of trying to compete, complete this quadruple. Again, something I don't really want to be mentioning or talking about. Um, but safe to say, Liverpool coming into this game on the back of a brilliant win against Man City absolutely put them to the sore first half down on Wembley and failed south. Also on the back of reaching the semi-final in the Champions League against Villarreal uh, with a draw the other night against Benfica and Anfield. So we're coming into it with good form. Um, we're really starting to find our form now. Um, that starting lineup the other day against Man City, I believe, is probably at this stage our strongest starting lineup and one that we should try and go with nearly in as many games as we can. But we know Klopp will probably ring the changes. We'll have a look at that later on and the probable lineups and, and discuss it in a little bit of depth. Um, but yeah, we couldn't, um, you know, we can't be complacent going into this one. This is another massive one. And we know at times with these big games, um, form goes out the window um, and we can't afford to be complacent in any way because I think we really need to do the job nearly that we did down at Old Trafford where we just put these guys to the sword the, themselves I mean they're really really struggling at the moment we've seen them against Everton last week where they were absolutely as flat as a pancake they were absolutely terrible no one showed up and again against Norwich the other day although they won 3-2 the amount of chances they gave up to Norwich was just Remarkable considering Norwich's Norwich is, you know, right at the foot of the table, and um, more or less relegated. But they made it look like a basketball match, which is kind of where United have been this season. Um, their their season is all but done, um, but they find themselves in a top four race, um, and not necessarily because of their own form, but necessarily because of. Just how bad Arsenal, Spurs and West Ham have been. It's like nobody wants this top four spot. So we really have to be at it again on Tuesday. Uh, we can park the FA Cup. We're now on the final against Chelsea. I think it's the 14th of May. Uh, we don't have a game in the Champions League again until uh, the following week where we start against Villarreal. So all our focus now this week has to be on the league where we have a big game against Man United on Tuesday, and then we have the Merseyside Derby on Sunday. Two games and two teams that would like nothing more than to stumble our position in the title race and hand it to Man City, which is weird from being a Man United fan that this is the position that they find themselves in, that their two closest rivals are the two that are battling it out in a rivalry for trophies. Um. So let's get into, I mean, if you look at current form at the moment, Liverpool with five wins on a draw, the draw coming against Man City in the league at the Etihad. United is kind of a mixed bag, now as Eric, two losses, two wins and two draws in their last six, albeit they got the win against Norwich, albeit two players showed up. Ronaldo bagging a hat-trick, three very, very good goals. And David De Gea, again, making clinical saves at really important times in the match. Um, but listening to David De Gea's uh, post-match interview, he seems to be really, really disappointed in where he finds Man United at the moment. Um, and again, he made it fairly clear that it's really himself, Ronaldo, that are keeping the team in it, which is no surprise. Um, if you look at team news at the moment, Klopp looks like he's going to have a fully fit squad, so he may, he may potentially make a few changes. I'm not too sure. If it was me, I'd be going full letter with that team again um, because you have had a number of days to recover. But also, if you're playing on Tuesday, you're going to have five days to recover again for the Merseyside Derby as well. So I'd be going full strength. Um, at least that midfield has to start. That Fabinho, Thiago, Kate in midfield. The thoughts of dropping any of them at this stage in the season is just not an option. I think anyway, that's that's my view on it. I think if we start with anything less than them, it weakens our lineup. Um, for United, uh, Fred's missing, McTominay, Cavani, and Shaw are all sidelined. As we know, Mason Greenwood is still serving this club suspension with ongoing stuff. 
um, and Varane may be available. So if Varane coming back in would be a huge lift for United because at the moment at the back, they're just horrendous. Um, and to ship two goals to Norwich and also give them another at least three really, really good opportunities really says a lot about where United's at at the moment. Let's look at the possible lineup. The possible lineups out there at the moment for Liverpool, Alisson, Trent, Matip, Van Dijk, Robertson, Henderson, Fabinho, Thiago, Salah, Firmino and Mane. I really look at this and I think, I don't see how, like, there's no way Kanata should be getting dropped. I think he really nails down that position now and I think Matip has become his backup. As good as Joel has been this season, more or less injury-free and playing great football. But I think Kanata, you've seen it in the City game, he's just different level at the moment. In terms of the midfield, I already expressed my concern. I think Keita cannot be dropped. I think unless there's an issue there, he cannot be dropped. He was absolutely fantastic against Man City and he would torture United. Um, so I think Henderson really at this stage, as good as he's been and he's absolutely brilliant and we love Jordan Henderson. He's our club captain. I think Keita is really nailing down that position now. Um, and I think it's it's hard to justify picking Jordan, considering his form this season as well. If you look at his last four or five games, I think he's been coming in anywhere between a five and a six in terms of the rating, where Shin Keita the other day, he was a nine. He was sublime. So I think, I think to make that amount of changes, I don't think it's going to happen. I also think bringing Bobby Firmino back in, Although he got those two goals, um, I don't know whether you bring him into this game. I would be more inclined to play Diaz because I think Diaz will absolutely torture United as well with those direct runs and stuff like that. He'll put the fear of God in them. So I think Diaz has to start and maybe bring Bobby on when things maybe potentially are a little bit safer. But I think he should go with the exact same lineup that he went against City. And I think we should go with the exact same intensity and the exact same press and take nothing for granted just because United are poor at the moment. It doesn't mean they won't show up. It doesn't mean Ronaldo might have a great game. It doesn't mean that Bruno may not show up. Bruno could have an excellent game. So we have to go into this game, put these guys to the sword, move on to Everton then. It's really, really important that we do this because any points dropped at the moment, title race is done and I think we have an opportunity as well to go top again and put the pressure on City who are playing Brighton on the Wednesday which is not going to be an easy game because we've seen how well Brighton did against Spurs they absolutely played Spurs off the park I've never seen a Spurs team as flat as they were against Brighton the other day um, and Brighton could have had a few more goals in fairness Trossard popping up with the late winner but in reality Brighton with a better team on the day um, for United's lineup at the moment, David Ahe, of course, who's a shoe in there as number one. He's by far a country mile being United's best player of the season without a shadow of a doubt. And, and because he's had to be, you know, Wan Basaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Teles, Matic, Pogba, Alanga, Fernandez, Sancho, Ronaldo. Obviously, when you look at this lineup, Wan Basaka, who's had an awful season by his own standards. He would be one that Luis Diaz could really get at because Luis Diaz could turn him inside out. Lindelof and Maguire, we know that's not the ideal pairing in there. Um, and probably because of Maguire more than Lindelof because I think Lindelof, to me, is a better defender than Harry Maguire. So I think if Varane was available, I'd go with Lindelof and Varane. But I know Ranić ain't going to do that because he's been favouring Maguire as club captain all, all season since he came in. Tellez at the back as well, who started out pretty well as well, looking as a deputy for Luke Shaw, but in recent times has been absolutely poor. But we know he can put a really good ball into the box, so we're going to have to be weary of that. And also with uh, Trent marking him as well, we want Trent really, really solid on that side against Alex Tellez, but I don't see it being a problem because the levels between Tellez and Trent is massive. Um, Matic and Pogba and Bruno in midfield is an interesting dynamic. It's kind of a weird one because you have Matic who has just turned around and said, well, he's done after this season, um, which doesn't bode well when a player is coming out and saying that. It means he's kind of checked out a little bit. And in fairness to the man of Matic, he, is, uh, he has been by far one of their best performing midfielders. Uh, Bruno Fernandes has been absolutely shocking and even more shocking since he got that new contract. Uh, Alanga's only a young lad, so he's still trying to come in and bed in. 
Pogba's totally checked out. I mean, I seen the other day against Norwich, they were playing him as a CDM, which was absolutely shocking. Um, we know the quality of Sancho, and this is one that we'll have to keep an eye on. And we know Ronaldo on his day, he can score goals if you give him the opportunity. So he's one that, that's why I like the idea of maybe playing Konate in there, because I think Konate could easily take care of Ronaldo and take him out of the game. He's just too strong. Um, and his technique and everything else against Ronaldo would be would be excellent. And I'd love to see Konate up against Ronaldo. I'd like to see the dynamic of that, you know. So, yeah, so there's, there's opportunities all over the park for us. I mean, I think if you go through the two starting 11s, you would struggle. You would struggle to put a United player into the combined 11 if you were doing it. I think the only, the only, the only competitive series is, you know, Alisson versus David De Gea, and Alisson goes in every time, but David De Gea would certainly be the backup to Alisson. But I don't think any of these players you would even have as backups against Liverpool. We're just so much stronger. We're at a much different level. We're at a very different stage in um, the club situation at the moment. We're fighting for all trophies at the moment. United are clinging on to a top four race. Um, but yeah, and, and the betting reflects that as well. I had a look at the betting. Liverpool two to five on. The draws four to one and United are six to one. I can't remember another time when United coming to Anfield would be six to one. And Liverpool two to five on. That's the goal from where both these clubs are at at the moment. In terms of a prediction, I'm looking at three one. Um, I'm gonna go for Kanate to bag another one off a corner. He seems to be on fire. I just hope he plays him. Um, but I think he'll bag another one off off the corner. Um, Mo Salah needs to get back to scoring. He needs to get a bit more selfish. Um, he seems to be he seems to be constantly trying to make these spaces to play players in instead of taking on the responsibility himself. I'd like him to take more resp- responsibility himself in terms of scoring the goals again. Um, and Luis Diaz has to be due a goal at this stage. And I think that dynamic of him on that side against wan he can easily cut inside, turn wan inside out, and maybe get some joy there with a few goals. Um, I'm looking at a prediction of 3-1. Um, I presume Ronaldo might pop up with a goal, you know what I mean? But I just think... I think this could be a very tough day at the office for Man United. I think Liverpool should put them to the sword. Um, I don't think United at the moment are in any kind of form. I don't think they're in any kind of mindset. And coming to a place like Anfield on a Tuesday evening under the lights with Liverpool with their tails up at the moment, Carabao Cup, FA Cup final, Champions League semi-final, point off the title race. You know what I mean? It's just, it's it's all looking and favouring towards us and I hope I'm not wrong. But I think the gulf between these two teams at the moment is absolutely massive. And I think we're better than them all over the park. But I think we need to start the way we started against Man City. And I think we really need to put them to the sword. We need that high energy, high press, wear them down. They're not going to want any of this. Obviously, the dynamic between Klopp and Ranić there, it's a bit kind of Star Wars. It's the master versus the, 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 the apprentice. You know what I mean? I mean, they all talk about Ranić being this master of the gag and press. Well, he's going to feel the full force of the gag and press on Tuesday night at Anfield. Um, and it's going to be a very, very bad night, I think, for him and for Man United. I hope we can get the win, put the pressure under Man City, and let's see what Brighton can do. Until next time, folks, this has been the Shankly Sessions. This is your big match preview. Liverpool versus Man United come to you Tuesday, 8 p.m. from Anfield. If you want to contact the show, we're out on Twitter at Sessions Shankly. You'll get us on the upper tier podcast at gmail.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, the upper tier podcast. And you'll also get audio versions of the show, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Till next time, we will be dropping a match reaction. And don't forget to tune in on Monday night. You will get the Monday mashup as well, where we review all the weekend's action and all the latest hot topics. One show that you're not going to want to miss. There's some serious hot topics in there this week that we're going to be discussing. Till next time, a pleasure, my friends.